And uh, she gave me permission to read part of it to you. And you know, I love reading stories to my grandkids, so I'm just going to read a little bit of the needle nose story to you today. Trust me, it's not very funny. It's a little bit too close to home, but it's about legalism. Once upon a time, in a small town in East Texas, there lived a very religious and upstanding family, the Needlenoses. Everyone knew the Needlenose family were religious and upstanding because every Sunday, they were at the big Baptist church on Main Street. Because they were so upstanding, the Needlenose family followed all the rules. The most important rule of all, of course, being, thou shalt attend a big Baptist church every single Sunday. There were other lesser rules, of course, such as men shall wear a suit and tie to church and women shall never wear pants. But it would take more trees than there are in all the rainforest to print enough books to contain all the rules the needle noses were so careful to follow. Out of the whole needle nose family, the most religious and upstanding of all was Mother Needle Nose. Of all the character qualities spoken of in the Bible, Disapproval was Mother Needlenose's favorite. In fact, she considered disapproval to be her spiritual gift. Because disapproval was so very ingrained into her character, she had absolutely no need in her personality for joy, peace, patience, much less kindness or love or any of those other non-essential character qualities. Her church came under Mother Needlenose's scrutiny often. She disapproved of the WMU having an auction, yes, an auction, to raise money for missions because auctions are gambling, and Mother Needlenose did not approve of gambling, and she let the WMU know about it. However, as helpful as her spiritual gift of disapproval was within the church, she reserved the full force of her gift of disapproval for her husband and children, and eventually the spouses of her children. Now, Papa Needlenose learned to bless those around him often with his self-important talk. Self-importance was his spiritual gift. He spoke many words, often, both religious and otherwise. He was quite the expert on any and every topic, from dairy cows to college football to trombones to lug nuts. And he filled the ears of everyone from miles around with his many knowledgeable and self-important words. However... It was his religious language in which he was truly fluent. He spoke Baptist words often, both to the religious and upstanding who wanted to hear them, and plowing right over the unrighteous souls who didn't care to hear them. With great self-importance, he would utter such profound biblical phrases as, God won't put more on you than you can handle. God helps those who help themselves, and the all-time favorite Bible verse of righteous men everywhere surely found somewhere in Proverbs, a woman's place is in the kitchen. (laughs) To be continued. This is Melissa's attempt to write a story, like a satire about legalism, and so the end of it hadn't been written yet. Who knows what's going to happen to the needle-nosed family? For sure, she has a clear understanding of what legalism is, living by the rules instead of living free under grace. So that's a ditch to avoid. But there's another ditch on the other side of the road, and that's the ditch of license. And what is license? It's the attitude that says, hey, because I'm under grace and can't lose my salvation, I can just do anything I want. No rules, no no boundaries for me. Yeah, I've been saved by grace. I can't lose my salvation, so I can just pretty much live it up, do anything I want to. 